Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Uncensored. I'm Marianne from Yachts Mermaid, your host. And today I have Sarah, a former Yachty and now spiritual advisor. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Thank me you. too. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about something that I think we don't really talk about enough, or to be honest, I don't think at all in the yachting industry, if any, and that is intuition and mental health. And we're going to talk about this because Sarah's story really will help you understand how your intuition can help you through having a better mental health on board and also beyond this, the, the life at sea, right? So I'm going to pass on the mic to you and I want you to share with us that moment where you realize, you know, maybe you didn't realize it in the moment, but looking back, you were like, wow, if I only would have actually listened to myself. So yeah. Yeah, I definitely didn't realize that in that moment, for sure not. So it was in 2019. My aunt was dying of answer unfortunately i was in germany because i am from germany i was applying for jobs because hey that's what you do like you're in between jobs you gotta go and make that money right so obviously my aunt was passing and that's a whole lot of like inner trouble going on and i'm like about to lose her and like all these feelings but i just went on to go to have a job interview and the south of France and I ended up getting the job and accepting the job and everything and while I was on board she actually passed away and my thing to go about it was to go into a tea and just start drinking like drinking my pain away and not really feeling my feelings and during the job, I was just not performing the way I would normally perform. I was not cooking great food as I'm known to. And yeah, I was just after after the day, I was just laying in bed crying. And, and yeah, I was just basically self-sabotaging. If I would have actually been in tune with my intuition, I would have not ever started to look actually for a job to just make that money. I would just take the time for myself and breathe and breathe properly, be with my family. Because that's the most important part. When someone close to you is passing away, then you should really be with your family and take care of your grief and not drinking away. And definitely not working 16 hours a day. Yeah. With, uh, and basically. even when you were at the job and you were going through this process of numbing yourself the, mm -hmm. the, the, the grief you didn't quit right I didn't know you know. a part of you was like probably like hey get out of here you continue mm -hmm. to push forward uh, mm -hmm. you know listening to maybe the fear of like I need the money I need to be here or whatever it is so you know that self-sabotaging of getting into a place where actually then you get like let go off yeah exactly like i i was just pushing 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 myself to really the limit and it came down to myself and the captain talking like hey you don't seem happy like the guests aren't really happy with your performance i love to keep you on board but you, you got to change like your performance has to improve in order for you to stay on board and I was just like honestly I I can't get myself up to the standards so I think it's best for me to just leave the boat and a week later that's what I did okay. and did they knew what they were going through yeah so he, he basically knew the captain right away that my aunt was in the midst of passing away. And he actually let me fly out to go to the funeral. But, you know, like, you fly up to Amsterdam and, you know, the next day the funeral is and the next day you're flying back right. to There's be no back. Way. 
you can't process the thing. Mm -hmm. No, no process, process at all. So, I mean, while you're on charter, I think everyone can agree. You're so busy with everything Somebody else. else. Exactly. So, but it's really what you have to take care of your, your needs first. If you really want to be centered and well, like mentally well, then you have to take care of your needs first. And it's easier said than done, especially on charter. I, I, I am absolutely aware, but there's so many little things that you can do to make sure that you, you are staying centered. Mm. So, and Sarah, in one of our conversations, you were talking about, as you mentioned, in that moment where you were, you lost your aunt and you were kind of going against your intuition because you weren't in touch mm -hmm. and in tune with, with yourself from the inside out. You also mentioned something about we recently had one member from the yachting community commit suicide on board. I bring this up because this was kind of like that moment, aha moment for you of remembering like, wow, this is so important. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Scrolling through Instagram and saw one of the posts where someone says like, okay, we already lost another person out of our community to suicide. And it's been happening so often and like so many people that were on their social medias living their best life, or, like working on a yacht, being in the Caribbean or maybe being even on an explorer yacht, like just being all these beautiful places and they're supposed to be happy, but then they decide to end their lives. So what is going on? That is where I figured, hey, I've been on the journey since a couple of years and I've learned so much in these past years. So maybe I can just direct that into the community as well and actually get people the help. And I'm not a therapist by any means, but there's a few techniques that you can implement yourself without actually going to, to a therapist where you can actually better your mental health. Can you tell us a little bit about your story of when your your journey, right? Because you, you mentioned <laughs> that COVID happened, you had to come back to Germany because the boat couldn't, I don't know, afford you or something like that. And then, you know, like you said to me, that numbing had to stop, right? Because the whole mm -hmm. world stopped. And yep. that kind of brought you back into, hey, maybe I should look within myself. And that opened up this whole world for you that was already there but just you remember it and now you're wanting to be at service from that place can you tell us a little bit about that yes so 2020 hit <laughs> okay. and I, I found myself first in the Caribbean where I always wanted to be and then the owner called well let's send everyone home for now till this is over and then you, you guys come back so I had to go back to Germany All right. she didn't want to be because my parents just separated after being together for 35 years. On top of that, I had to leave my loving job and yeah, so I found myself back in Germany and like, okay, this, there must be a higher reason for, for this, like this cannot just be the end of it basically so I talked to a friend and I'm like what can I do like what is what should I do and basically started meditating started to connect <clears throat> with myself with what is going on inside of me like every time these the thoughts arises where maybe something isn't going well, I'd be like, okay, let's go out partying. And like the lifestyle of Yadi is quite like work hard, play hard. And that's the lifestyle I definitely live. Drop out day, what do you do? Go out and drink. So 
that numbing came to an end with being back home, no parties, no nothing happening. So, yeah, I started really like meditating, starting to read books about self-improvement and reading books about, yeah, just how to implement a more happier life. So that's how it all gets started. And yeah, now I'm about to be an energy healer, a spiritual advisor. I read oracle cards. I do quantum healing. <laughs> it happened within a short amount of time. But with that being said, like I just realized there's uh, so much you can do. To, little things that you can do for so yourself. Can you tell us at least three of those little things that maybe somebody yeah. who's in the episode now and they feel like, you know what? I, I get it. There's something within myself that's really calling my attention. I've been numbing myself in whatever mm -hmm. shape or form. It could be shopping. It could be drinking. It could be drugs. It could be workaholic, yeah. like just working, working, working. Um, mm -hmm. Just numbing yourself, right? And what can they do to start implementing that, to start coming back into themselves so they can maybe get in tune with their intuition and, and their yeah. inner wisdom. Absolutely. So meditation, big one. <laughs> big surprise, no. <laughs> But meditation definitely is the key to your intuition and to just quieting your mind as well. If you never done meditation, the easiest thing is just to like close your eyes Take deep breath in, focus on your breathing. And if your mind is wandering off, just go back to your breathing. Don't put yourself down for having your mind wander off because that's super natural and that's totally normal. And like try to do that for five minutes. If five minutes seems too short for you, then go up to seven, go up to 10, sort of like that. But start slow, like start with five minutes. That's fine. Breath work is also quite good and important. I use the four, seven, eight method. So breathing in through your nose for four seconds, holding your breath for seven and breathing out slowly out of the mouth for eight. And that repeat that four, five times. That will reduce the stress and also get in touch with your intuition more. Journaling. It's also a big, big part. You can journal about anything and everything, <laughs> but quite a few techniques, especially like if you wake up, if you're someone who wakes up in the morning and has their head full of thoughts and stress and anxiety, it's really helpful when you wake up to just take your journal and whatever is going through your mind, just do that brain dump. So dump it all in to your journal, write everything down that is going through your head and when you think okay i'm done i'm okay then go about your day but you can also do that at night if it was a busy charter day before going to bed rather than looking at your phone take your journal and write everything down that was not maybe going well or Whatever is going through your head, just make your journal your best friend and really write everything down. There's so much more. <laughs> like, try to like think less and like feel more. Especially when, coming back to my story, yeah, where I was just thinking, oh, I have to make that money. I have to, yeah, just work and have have my CV looking right. And but I didn't feel so. In the long run, it caught up, that the, those feelings caught up. So if you actually allow yourself to feel your feelings, they won't caught up because they're out of your system. So I understand if you're in the midst of charter, it's really hard to just like burst out in tears in front of everyone. Try to excuse yourself, go to the bathroom and practice emotional release. What is emotional release? There are many techniques there, but I'll just share one. So basically, you take your hands, 
put it in front of your mouth and do the silent scream. So just picture yourself really like screaming into your hands, but without the noise. Okay. It is possible. Interesting. I, yeah. I literally, <laughs> what I do is I literally just grab the pillow it, and actually scream into it. Yeah. Because I feel like that's a better release. Like if I, especially if I, and I say this because I work with a lot of people that have had trauma with not being able to speak up. So mm -hmm. it's very important that they don't hold it in, that they actually mm -hmm. do release that emotion through through the screen. Yeah, I yeah. do that. I punch pillows. Just the release of that emotion. Exactly. But boats are quite noisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if, yeah. if you go into your head and still start screaming, most people will notice it. <laughs> Or at least yeah, but I mean, I feel like if you go to the bathroom or you're in your cabin and you put the pillow, you can you can let it out. You can scream and not be heard Yeah, because it won't be that loud. It really won't. That's why you put the pillow on. But if you can also obviously try the silent scream. I haven't tried it. I don't think it's something that resonates with me, but maybe it resonates with other fair people. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm giving the other option as well. Exactly. No, fair enough. I mean, whatever resonates with you, take it. In and whatever doesn't resonate with yeah. you, then you know, it's not for you listening to your intuition. But with that silent scream, I'm not saying don't say anything, but like be like, <laughs> right, but not super loud. And while doing that, move your hips. So, like, shake your hips basically, or emotional release also, like, shake it off. The, the easiest thing is just to like shake. Oh, your hands or no. if, if you look at dogs basically if they get out of a weird situation they would just shake mm -hmm. and then they're back to normal what also helps is tapping your thi thi thymus yeah. yeah so like really tapping onto that one that will lower stress and yeah actually improves your immune system so I could go on and on yeah, and on. But <laughs> and I think it's important you mentioned to feel and come back into the body, right? Because when you want to feel, you have to be in the yes. body. And when we mm -hmm. don't want to feel, we kind of disassociate from the body and we go into the mental realm or we numb ourselves. And I think grounding yourself, there are different grounding techniques like putting your feet in the water or in the ground. Mm -hmm or literally going through every part of your body and just becoming aware of each part of the body without yeah. moving it, just really grounds you. I think that's really important. And also something that came up, it's practicing gratitude, because when you practice gratitude, it really comes, you become more in tune with you and what's important to you. And that opens up that connection with your inner wisdom. And that's something so yeah. simple that we can all do even while you're in the bathroom, taking a shower or brushing your teeth, like just reminding yourself of one thing at least that you're grateful for. So Sarah, to wrap things up, how are you helping and supporting Yadis these days through your gifts? <laughs> so first of all, I offer Oracle card readings where we just go over what is basically going on in your life and how we, we can improve it. And I mentioned that I am an energy healer. So I offer energy healing sessions, but I'll do them in one-to-one -one sessions, not basically yeah. over Zoom. So what I'll do, I'll travel to the south of France, to Palma, to Florida, hopefully, for the boat show. And so people can, yeah, schedule new sessions with me. Okay. And we'll have all your details to uh, video to go whoever you picture. You know, Oracle reading or energy healing can get in contact with you. And by the way, I did a Oracle reading with Sarah. And I'm, even though I'm super spiritual, I'm kind of like iffy about this stuff because I don't really, I'm very particular who I allow into my energy field. And I can tell you guys that Sarah is so in tune with her inner wisdom that that really comes through. 
and she's not going to give you a BS story. Actually, she's going to help you remember what you already know deep within. So yeah, so our our reading was really interesting because she was reading. I was like, wait, you're actually reading my friend. And then it was like, <laughs> boom, like full circle. And it was it was amazing to see my friend get her reading and really, yeah, tell me like, wow, this was so different. This was not what I expected from a from from my typical because she does like tarot readings and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. She was like, this was so it wasn't cookie cutter. It was so in tune with truly what was inside of me. And she was just mirroring that for me. So if you guys are into that, I would definitely say give it a go. I highly recommend it. And yeah, just kind of reminding you guys to the importance of really reconnecting with your inner wisdom, intuition, because it's going to benefit your mental health is going to benefit yeah. your work performance. It's going to benefit your abundance. It's going to be benefit everything within you and outside of you. And obviously the people around you as well. And if you are indeed interested in an Oracle reading or a session with me, just contact me and we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys, that's our wrap. And I'll see you on the next show.